Well, it is a, a pleasure to be here and to, to know that I'm not only sort of talking uh, at some people who want to know what I know, but actually in in a long conversation with a whole bunch of people who are up against the same wall I'm up against. And we're all experimenting and finding ways to do this together. So um, I, I want to, um, to you know, embody as much of what we've been doing at Trinity in my presentation as possible. So we're going to start with a little nature video. First, a little a word. If, if you're not terribly familiar with Trinity Church, uh, I gotta say in some ways, Trinity is somewhat ironically named since it's more Unitarian than Trinitarian in some ways. But um, so we'll start with a little nature video because that fits our personality. And it also is an example of a lot of what we developed over the year. Um, but it depends entirely on me being clever enough uh, to do it. So let's see how that goes first. I'll do this share screen thing, and then we'll start with that. You know what? I'm going to stop and start again because I did the wrong thing, because that's how this goes. Like this. So that little bit uh, is a typical um, transition that we would use between pieces of the worship service on a Sunday morning. Uh, and that's something that I shot a, a week ago out for a walk. So let's, let's let that little peaceful moment uh, center us. And now let's, let's pray together. O oh God of unchangeable power and eternal light, Look favorably upon your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by the one through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I want to start with two sort of pop culture references. Um, the first is to Garrison Keillor. Um, you may have heard the name and maybe you haven't. He was a radio personality for many, many years on public radio, um, which doesn't have commercials. And he was famous for creating pretend commercials for powder milk biscuits and so forth on his show called A Prairie Home Companion. And um, I loved that show when I used to watch it now 40 years ago, a lot. And um, I wanna share with you a little bit of it because it will help. Um, it was very formative for me. And so when we came to a crisis a year ago and I needed to kind of dig deep and figure out how to do things and started touching my touchstones, Without intending to, I, I kind of uh, used this, and I think you'll understand why as we go. Well, it's been a quiet week in Lake Wobegon, Minnesota, my hometown, <laughs> out on the edge of the prairie. It's been cold, it's been cold, it's been in the low teens, highs in the day. We don't do wind chill. Uh, in Lake Wobegon. It seems like bragging to us somehow. It just gives people an excuse not to go do things they ought to do. They ought to get up, get out, go, do. But church was very, very, very sparsely attended. Lake Wobegon Lutheran Church on Sunday, Pastor Liz gave the sermon on the wedding at Cana where Jesus turns the water into wine and just a few, few people there. She went to visit people during... So, uh, gotta get back to my script here. Um, 
I didn't ask you to watch his body language. I meant to, to say before I started that clip, watch his body language. You may have noticed he had his back turned to the audience or at least three quarters of the way, um, all, virtually all the way through. You know, he came out on stage, looked out at the audience and then turned his back and started his monologue. My interpretation of that is that he knew he was making radio. If you wanted to buy a ticket to watch him make radio, he would be happy to sell you one and he would even enjoy your presence in the room. But he was not making TV. Just because you were there watching doesn't mean he was going to do stuff for the sake of your looking at him. He was going to let you watch him make radio. He was focused on the sound and the medium of what he was doing, which was sound. 40 years ago, I sat in the kitchen on a Saturday night, week after week, and listened. And I felt like he was sitting on the other side of the kitchen table next to me. Fast forward to late March and early April of 2020, and, um, uh, and, and then this happens. And sometimes it really can be easier to give than to receive. So I've been thinking about how Jesus received love. The Gospels tell us that Jesus had friends. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were not his disciples. They were his friends. And perhaps they were friends with whom he could relax. I imagine it was in their home that he could be more than just a Messiah, that he could just also be a guy, that he could be seen for all of who he was. And lo, if you haven't met Nadia Bowles Weber before, go look her up. She'll change your life. She is a Lutheran pastor who no longer serves in a parish. She now inhabits the internet. When I saw this mini sermon a year ago, it was for Maundy Thursday, it reminded me of Garrison Keeler. And I went, aha, Facebook Live is a medium that has a lot in common with radio. I saw that sermon on her Facebook page. I could have seen it on her Instagram page and 10 other places because she inhabits the internet very effectively, but Trinity had decided to do its online worship through Facebook Live, and there she was in the same place we were doing her thing and doing it in a way that reminded me of my my Saturday nights with, with Garrison Keeler. With everything taken up a step or two because she was using the visual side of the medium. When I listened to A Prairie Home Companion, I listened to it on the radio. I didn't see him uh, in, a, in a video of him making the radio show. I just listened to the radio show. And it was a personal and intimate experience. And I thought, here we are in a pandemic shutdown, at least for another week uh, or month or year or whatever. But here we are in a shutdown, isolated in our own homes and cut off from each other. Let's use this medium as an antidote to isolation. We stay in our own kitchens, but we get to get into each other's kitchens at the same time. How can we make that work? So Trinity, like all of us, went from being an, uh, a community that gathered in a specific place to being unable to gather in that specific place. Trinity went from being a community that gathered really because of its specific place. We have uh, a historic and artistically significant building and collection of stained glass windows. And for a lot of people who are at Trinity, they're there because 
they dropped into the building during an Allentown art festival, or they went to a wedding or a funeral there and they were overwhelmed by the beauty of the building. And they said, I'm coming back to this place. I don't care who's here. And it was the draw of the physical beauty of the place. And we were unable to keep doing that. But we said to each other, that is to say, I said to everybody a lot, the building's closed, but the church is not closed. We are not in exile. We are at home on the internet. We're at home. All of us are at home. I'm at home. You're at home. And we're at home together on the internet because being online allows us to be together. The internet is our PPE. Nobody likes it. It's hot and sticky and uncomfortable. Nobody wants to wear it, but it allows us to be together when we can't be together safely otherwise. So I made the decision to do my part of online worship from my house. This evening, I'm at church in my office at church because my internet connection is faster and I'm more uh, confident about all of these little clips that I'm playing for you and all of that stuff. Um, but I all of my Sunday morning church online was from my house so that I was on an equal footing with the entire congregation. All of us were at home, all of us were at home online together. And eventually it began to feel like we were at home online. We kept saying that we were, and eventually we began to, um, to start interacting and feeling that way. And so I did Sunday mornings without vestments, without a stole. I wore a collar just to sort of let everybody know, yeah, watch out, he's a priest. But I, but I didn't want to say I'm privileged to worship in my accustomed way. I'm at home, you're at home. So that was the, that was the thing. Um, and so if we were going to be at home online, I wanted our experience to be shaped by the medium. I had that aha moment with Nadia Bowles Weber, who is as different from Garrison Keillor as night is from day, reminding me of Garrison Keillor and reminding me of that experience of, of personal intimate connection through uh, over distance through an electronic medium. And so I wanted Trinity to behave like an online native. I wanted our church service to be uh, something that was an online church service rather than trying to be a normal church service with a camera pointed at it. So how were we going to do this? Well, start with not being in church, start with being in my third floor study. So that was what we did. Um, it took us a while to get our bearings. We pivoted to doing a, a sort of morning prayer-ish sermon, a uh, service uh, for a congregation that really focuses on gathering around the table. It was, uh, I thought it was gonna be a big shock. It was like not a big shock. It was uh, connecting with each other. It was the shoulder to shoulder thing, standing around the communion table. It wasn't the bread and the wine that people were missing. It was the being together. And we were being really deliberate about trying to make the togetherness connection in the medium that we had to work with. So we you know, plunged in and, um, and as, uh, as, as Luke Fodor reported last week about St. Luke's, we had uh, some pretty rough spots the first few weeks. Uh, I, I was blessed by having a, a member of the online congregation who is a retired military drone pilot. And when a drone pilot calls, you know, texts you and tells you to use your technology a certain way, you try that first and lo and behold, it works. <laughs> so uh, I had a number of people from their homes kind of coaching me as I was trying to lead ser the service online. And that became a bonding experience for us. And we just kept on plunging ahead. We chose to do live stream on Facebook rather than uh, making it a Zoom meeting. 
um, for a couple of reasons. One, Facebook goes and finds your audience for you. You don't have to find your audience and give them a password to get in. You say, it's on Facebook. Go, you know, go put Trinity Buffalo in the search bar in Facebook and you'll find us. And that worked. And we also sent out a link every Sunday morning to our entire email list and all that stuff. But we picked up people all through the year who were finding us on Facebook because that's where we were. So that was an important part of it. Uh, it, it should be noted that um, our demographic is a Facebook demographic. We're not the cool kids. We, we, uh, we were 50 years ago, but now we're old people. And so we're on Facebook because we stole it from the cool kids 20 years ago. The other thing is it has a very accessible comment section in the live stream format. And what I kept saying every Sunday was the comment section is the embodiment of our togetherness. When you're in church and you wanna see who else is there, you can look sideways and see who else is there. On Facebook, you can't see. You can see a little red eyeball in the corner of the screen that tells you how many other people there are. But if you're not reading the comment section, you don't know who they are. And if they're not commenting, you don't know who they are. So everybody chat up a storm. And that was a, a mantra for us on Sunday mornings. Um, and then also, um, Facebook automatically converts a live stream into a video and keeps it accessible easily without any work at all so that people who couldn't watch it at the time could watch it later. And I heard from folks saying, yeah, Sunday mornings aren't good for me. That's why I haven't been in church in the last 10 years, but now I'm watching it every Sunday afternoon. Bingo. That's why we're continuing to live stream now that we're back in the building. I should also say that we do use Zoom and use it a lot. We have uh, four weekly small groups, three of which are in the form of worship services, and one is in the form of a discussion group. And those have met all through the pandemic. Actually, the discussion group didn't form until late in the fall um, when we said, gee, we think we've got kind of got under control what we're doing. Let's do some experimenting and try some new stuff. So we invented some new discussion group formats, those worked well and they're continuing. But our Sunday evening poetry and jazz service, our Thursday evening 12 step service and our Wednesday noon Eucharist are all basically Zoom small groups that meet for a specific worshipful purpose. Uh, and all four of those groups have become very intimate over the year. It was funny, people were a little standoffish for the first few months. But as time went by, those conversations got to be more and more uh, open and people have expressed a real gratitude and dependence on each other as the year has gone by. Back to the choice for using Facebook Live on Sunday mornings. Because Trinity had been trying to engage the broader community by using its Facebook page actively already and had done in some other ways that are a story for another time. We were already getting pretty good at sort of posting something every day on the Facebook page and on Instagram. Nobody pays attention, attention to us on Twitter, so we've just quit making the effort, but Instagram and, and uh, Facebook, we post nearly daily. And every two or three weeks or four weeks sometimes, we throw 20 bucks at, at Facebook and boost a post. It's almost always about an upcoming event. The amazing thing is that the Facebook posts that aren't boosted get a lot more traffic during the boosting period of that one promo than they do when we're not boosting something. So it's got a, a ripple effect that is worth a whole lot more than 20 bucks. And we focus our target audience geographically as much as we could be appealing to people around the world. And oh, heaven knows the Trinity is worth the attention of people all around the world. We are in fact a bricks and mortar church. We are in fact a local community. We have active engaged members who live very far away because we're online. 
but our purpose and our goal is to connect with the Buffalo community, the greater Buffalo community. So our target audience for our boosted posts is geographical. Um, and as I say, uh, we get, we get a, a boost on everything we do because of those boosted posts. We, because we were online and saying aloud together all the time, hey, we're an online community. This isn't virtual church, this is real church. It's, it's church that's happening now. It's not a pre-recorded thing that looks like a church service that you can watch to remind you of the church service that you're not going to. No, it's not that. This is an actual gathering for worship that's happening now. So it was critical for me to be leading the prayers live. So I was on a Zoom meeting along with Krista Seddon, our pianist, that was fed and the third person was Jeff Took, who is a member of the parish. He was the sort of Wizard of Oz, the cyber sacristan. He was manage he was receiving our Zoom feed and putting them into a Facebook feed that he could also put videos and other stuff into. Without getting into all the technical stuff, we basically made sure that there was a live stream with live people doing something that was augmented by pre-recorded video where that made sense for technical reasons to create content that worked better. So the reading of lessons and the, and the music were all done by pre-recording. Um, the, the pastoral benefit of that came as a surprise and a real delight. And that was, um, I, would, I would arrange to meet with all three of the readers for each Sunday during the week ahead of time. And we would have a little 15 minute one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting during which they would do their reading and I would use Zoom to record the video. So I didn't, nobody had to get out a video camera, nobody had to use a cell phone, blah, blah, blah. Nobody had to record it and then blah, any of that. We just let Zoom record it. I then took it into iMovie and cleaned it up a little bit, but, but basically uh, Zoom made the, the stress level of creating a video recording go from here to there, just like that. And I spent 15 minutes or a half an hour having a pastoral chat with three people a week. That was tremendous. And when I realized that potential of that, after the first month and a half, when I had gone back to the same 12 people two or three times already because they were the lectors, I said, to heck with that. And I just started emailing people whose names I saw in the comments section and said, would you like to do a reading next week? Let's get together on Zoom. And we had over 90 people do readings during the course of the 15 months because I relentlessly chased down everybody I could identify as participating ever on the Facebook Live stream on Sunday mornings and some people that I thought should have been and weren't. <laughs> I shagged a few of those too. Eventually we realized that we had a, a really flexible, powerful tool. So the, the thing that Jeff Took was doing at his house he was using a program called OB as in boy, S as in Sam, um, which is a shareware free software thing that, that online gamers developed so that they could play multi-screen games online together. Oh boy, did they ever build a robust, incredibly stable, high powered platform that is free, but it's really picky. And so you have to be technically minded to climb the learning curve. And Jeff did that. And it's, it's a, so I don't recommend it, but it, it was the thing that allowed us to blend live action from Zoom with videos and still photographs and all kinds of other stuff all at the same time. So let me, let me give you just a little sample of um, the beginning of a recent uh, a Sunday morning service while we were still online only. Um, and when we had kind of gotten the glitches worked out. 
Um, so I'm getting it set up so that I can go do this. Now, let's see, here we are, share screen and all that. So we would start the Sunday morning with um, 10 minutes from, from 10.20 to 10.30 of just a static image with music playing in the background, pre-recorded music. And that was basically telling you your computer works. See, uh, Facebook Live says it's live and there you are and there's a thing and it says worship's gonna begin soon and it will and you can hear music so your volume works. Um, I'm gonna bring us in just after the music stops and before we switch to live but you'll see the, the welcome image and then you'll see the first few seconds of a, of a Sunday morning. Good morning, welcome to Trinity Church Online. It is great to be together in this weird online space. I'm so glad that you are here for worship this morning and um, I want to help you get ready to participate fully. So if you haven't already gotten yourself the um, PDF guide handy for you for the service, now is a good time to do that. You don't have to print it out. I like to print it out, but you can simply have it in an open window on your gadget, whatever gadget you're using to connect to everybody um, through the internet. Remember, even, even now, as we are increasingly all vaccinated, and I hope you are making sure to do that as soon as you can, um, if you haven't already, even though that's the case, we still need to use the internet as our PPE for the time being. That time being. So another thing that I deliberately did was not just leave the service from the prayer book but in the Garrison Keeler, Nadia Boltz Weber way, just be very personal. We also prayed, we also read scripture, but there was a lot of me doing what I'm doing right now, which is just being, being personal with you. Um, pardon me for being kludgy. I need to go find my script and try to get back on track here. Um, oh, and I, so I wanna share with you next, um, how we blended the um, uh, the video and um, and live things together and all that stuff. So here we'll see a little transition from the ending of one reading to the beginning of another reading with a little nature video as a as a spiritual breather uh, in between. Then Peter asked, what can stop these people who have received the Holy Spirit, even as we have, from being baptized with water? So he gave orders that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. After this was done, they asked him to stay on with them for a few days. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The middle reading is by Denise Levertov. Don't say, don't say that there is no water to solace the dryness at our hearts. I have seen the fountain springing out of the rock wall and you drinking there. So there's, there's how that would feel on a normal Sunday morning uh, all the way through and that that nature video, that high class thing, that was that was down at um, uh, at LaSalle Park uh, with my cell phone, right? I have to say, we used consumer electronics to do everything this past year. We've now, when we get to the in in church thing, we've had to. Um, move to different equipment, but for what we were doing from home, we used homey stuff all the way through. And uh, it was remarkable how, how effective it was at getting the job done. Along with being um, the pre-recorded readings and music, uh, I was live doing the, the prayers. 
And to sort of drive the point home, we got Krista Seddon, our pianist, to be live also. Even though, as we've all discovered, you can't sing together over the internet. Well, it turns out maybe you can, but none of us could for the last year. And Zoom would completely defeat you if you tried. Nonetheless, you can take turns. And so that's how, that's how we handled uh, that. And so I'll show you how our uh, prayers of the people have been working um, with, a, with a prayer that involves Krista and me trading back and forth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Loving God, you have set us in families, clans, in cities and neighborhoods. Our common life began in a garden, but our destiny lies in the city. You have placed us in and around Buffalo. This is our home. Your creativity is on display here through the work of human hearts and hands. We pray for Buffalo today, for the east side and the west side, North Buffalo and South Buffalo. Let me remind you to Add your own prayers to the comment section freely during this time. We pray for our poorest neighbors and for powerful people in banks and businesses downtown. We pray for people from the First Ward and the Fruit Belt. We pray for neighboring communities from across our diocesan partnership, from Olcott to Olean, from Angola to Albion, from Erie to Edinburgh, from Emporium to Newcastle and a thousand other cities beyond our own. That prayer is based on one that was written by Walter Brueggemann some years ago. And I think Nadia Boltz-Weber and some other people in Denver got hold of it and localized it to Denver. I got wind of it and localized it to Buffalo. Uh, Kathy Dempsey Sims got hold of it and made it work for the whole partnership. It, I love that anyway. Um, for, so, the trick with, with uh, Facebook Live is that it's very much a, a one directional kind of thing. You can, you can have conversations going on in the chat section, but you can't see anybody except the people that you're, that you're arranging ahead of time to stream, right? The, what I've been showing you. And so we were able to cycle as many people through the role of reader as possible so that people could see each other's faces. If, if only three of them per week, still it was, it was a way of just trying to get as many people's faces into the live stream as a, as a big long arc as possible. But when it came time to celebrate um, St. Francis Day and try to come up with a, a, a blessing of animals, well, you know, Sometimes St. Francis Day brings out all kinds of foolishness in people. And so it was, it was a good occasion to see what else we might be able to do. Thank you. 
So look, here we are. We've got a screen full of people. This is Charm on Wheels. I am having a lovely time with all of these pets and their people. And um, if you are watching on Facebook Live um, because you don't have a pet to join the meeting with or because you just didn't want to have to deal with the technical hassle, it's all good. You can help uh, with the prayers as we bless these wonderful pets and all animals. So almighty and everlasting God, creator of all things, giver of life, in gratitude, we ask you to let your blessing be upon these animals. May our relationships with them mirror your love and our care for them be shaped and guided by your bountiful mercy. Grant the animals health and peace. Strengthen us to love and care for them as we strive to imitate the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and your servant, Francis. Blessings to you all. Let me uh, do a little featuring here, a little spotlight. There's Emily and another Coco, as I recall. So after that, I went around, I spent about five minutes just spotlighting different people in that screen, making them fill the screen with their, with their pet. And, you know, well, okay, so that's just shameless and cheesy, right? But it, that's what a pet blessing is at St. Francis Day. So we had a wonderful time. Um, but what happened at the beginning of that, you saw, you saw the end of a music video, which included some video of, of Bobby Militello playing saxophone and Krista Seddon playing piano. But then the, that visual got replaced with pictures of animals because it was St. Francis Day. And Jeff Took started doing this. It was actually at about that time of year that he began to realize he could take the music videos that we were recording each week and overlay them with other video material um, so they wouldn't get boring. Because watching people with masks on sing is really not very engaging visually. Uh, so, so we, which is what we had a lot of. And so he began to put these video overlays on it. And for St. Francis Day, it was a fat pitch, right? And he just swung at it hard and put all of those wonderful nature images on there. Um, let's see here. I'm going to... So along with other things, we got my um, nature photos in there. I think I've mentioned that. And it turned out that um, there's a painter in the congregation named uh, Carol Case Syracuse, who is a wonderful watercolorist. And um, she admitted at some point that she was uh, on Sunday mornings sitting in her studio doodling while um, watching the Sunday morning service. And this is what ended up happening when she was doodling. So every week she was producing a picture that was usually based on a picture that had appeared in the course of worship. And then she did a painting based on that. And we ended up uh, asking her to do a bunch of paintings of Easter flowers ahead of Easter, so that we could then incorporate a lot of her paintings into the visuals on Easter morning. And then we used those same pictures again throughout the 50 days of Easter. I won't take you all the way through that, but the, the point is that the, um, we kept trying to find new ways to take advantage of the medium, to, to be native, to the internet, native to this nine by 16 rectangle that we have uh, to work with and sound. And, um, and it was a real joy to, uh, to discover some other ways to add to that. Um, above all 
of the visual stuff, the, the community really lives in the comments section. And um, I can't show that to you very effectively, but I can tell you the method that we use and will continue to use as we have moved back into the church and are streaming from the church. Um, as I said, I encourage the congregation to talk in church, to chat up a storm in the comment section. And then we also um, had somebody whose job it was to hang out in the comment section. This is a person who happens to be a brilliant communications and development person and who also lives with me. So she can find out what announcements uh, we need to make sure to get ready to go and all that stuff. So Catherine, my wife, would be online in the comment section. And as people said, you know, good morning church or whatever, and, and she could see them in the comment section, she would hit their like button or she would say good morning, Carol or whoever. And if somebody asked for prayers, she would say, I'm praying for you. She would just, she would model participatory interaction in the comment section. And lo and behold, that encouraged other people to do the same thing. And it, it was infectious. And a lot of people got the hang of it. And uh, I can't say that Catherine could stop, but the point is, it wasn't that everybody got to hear from her, it's that everybody got to hear from each other because she inspired them to do that. She also was prepared ahead of time with, with links to all of the stuff that we wanted to tell people about. So when I would say, you know, please make sure to donate online, poof, in the comments section was the click to the online donations page. So, Um, now here we are and it's time to shift again. We're, you know, we've been online from church for two Sundays now, and I want to share with you just a little bit of what that looks like. Um, and then just a few more thoughts before we get into conversation. I'm, um, but I, but before we do, I want to say, we're now back at the beginning of the learning curve. Tr Trinity is late to the party for figuring out how to do church online from the church because we stayed home. Um, and I'm really hoping that we don't lose the spirit of adventure that we had all through the last year um, because along with all of the hardship of the pandemic, we also grew a lot and we discovered a lot and we connected to each other in ways we hadn't been connecting before. And I hope that the spirit of that experience will be sustainable uh, as we manage to figure out how to do it differently because we're now doing it in the church instead of doing it from home. So here's the beginning, here's the transition out of the welcome screen ahead of time to the in-person uh, live stream on a Sunday morning, and uh, then I'll tell you a little bit about it. Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Online and on site, in person. Uh, for those of you who are sitting right in front of me physically, looking around thinking, oh, we're back, we're on, we're in person. Well, we're, we're bringing in-person worship into the online service. And the online service is happening too, which is all pretty astonishing if you ask me. Anyway, welcome to everybody. Um, and especially welcome to those of you who are online. It is so great. I actually, I have the comment section right here on my fancy new gadget. I was a paper only for leading worship person until 15 months ago. And then I was sitting in front of my credibility bookcase. <laughs> All right, so here we are. I was so worried that I was going to forget to put on uh, pants instead of pajamas this morning that I thought I better just wear a robe. 
you know, just to play it safe. So my wife said to me at that, that she was terrified that it was going to be an hour of stand up. So fortunately, I, I managed to hold myself back at that point. Um, so we're streaming from church. And like Garrison Keeler, we're happy to have people there in the building. But I don't want to say that we're returning to real church. This past year has been real church all along. So we are continuing to engage the online community in the comment section and to celebrate, um, just to worship the way we've been worshiping. We're actually following the order of service that made more sense online. Um, we're following that order of service in person in the building, at least for a few weeks. Trinity changes its order of service a lot. Um, the, if you, you know, the prayer book is the thing that we don't use. And that's how we know we're Episcopalian because the Book of Common Prayer is precious to us, so we don't use it. Um, and so we change things up a lot, but we're gonna, we're gonna do what we've been doing online in church, in person for a few weeks to really solidify the point that what we did over the last year was real church and, and that we're moving forward from there rather than going back to anything. And, and we'll see what emerges. Um, the tech people, my wife Catherine in the comments section and Jeff Took um, managing the live stream are sitting in the pews in church with their laptops in their laps. And uh, everybody knows who they are and knows what they're doing and, and why they have their computers open. And we're encouraging people to take out their cell phones or if they have their tablets with them to get online, join the live feed, not to let their sound turn up because if they do, it'll confuse everything because Facebook is about 15 seconds behind real life. Um, but the comment section is there. And so the first Sunday, the one that you just saw when we were online, we had 30 people online. I thought that was amazing. Turns out 20 of them were in the pews. We had about 10 people who were at home online. And this past week, we had about 10 people who were at home online also, and fewer people online in the pews because that's just the way it worked out. But the point is, we will continue to remind each other that we are one community gathering in two ways, but we're gathering into one togetherness, but we're using two ways to do it. And I, I think that, you know, that's the, the what do we not want to forget um, when the pandemic is over. So um, a little bit about technical stuff. As I said, we used OBS, which is this remarkable freeware, shareware software for when we were online only. We're not using that anymore. Um, the camera on me in, in, my, in front of my credibility bookcase was the, the webcam built into my laptop. It's what you're seeing now. I, I never got a studio webcam. I never got an external microphone, any of that jazz. I just used this because it was pretty good. Um, now that we're in church, we have more demanding requirements to, to make the stream work reasonably well. And so um, what, uh, what um, Luke talked about last week about using, you know, consumer cameras joined together by some gadget he called Sling, which I thought was amazing. Um, that seems to me very viable. What we've opted for is what he said they decided not to do, which was um, what are known as PTZ cameras. They're pan tilt zoom cameras. Um, we have three of them. They are mounted in fixed places in the church, but they're not fixed. They pan and they tilt and they zoom and they're incredible and they're controllable from a computer console. So Jeff is now running those three cameras from his seat in the pews. Uh, and so he can choose, you know, which camera to use at one time or another. And he can also re-aim and refocus the cameras in different places. So we can see 
me standing up in front, we can see people reading at the lectern, we can see Paul playing at the organ, we can see Krista and the horn player, we can swivel all the way around and see people in the pews, we can see all over the room from what look like 15 different angles, but it's just three different camera angles, but, it, but they have a, a great deal of flexibility. And because we want to be able to do it with one person running it from a console and have lots of different, um, and be able to adjust the cameras. Um, you can't just have a camera on a tripod that needs somebody tending to it for that to work. So that was why we made that choice not to go with um, the kind of cameras that I'm already very comfortable with and to choose something new instead. Um, let's see, what else? Also, we have bad light and the PTZ cameras handle that better. And uh, the final thing is that the PTZ cameras are connected to each other and to the computer through an, a, an ethernet cable network. And those cameras are powered by the ethernet cable. So they are super dependable and super easy to manage with one person simply flipping on the power switch and opening up a laptop. And then, then you have to climb the learning curve to know what you're doing. But um, in terms of uh, how, much, how much effort goes into making it happen, one person can do it. And that's what we needed to have possible. <laughs>